right. So, we're back home and things continue. So, if you've been um, following these vlogs in the last, whoa, it's just over a week, isn't it, since I got back? In Monday, yeah, literally just, 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 just over a week when I got back. Um, some of you will know that I've cleared all our attic uh, and I've been having a bit of a declutter and, um, and say, hello Russia, are you going to say hello? Oh, hello Russia, how are you? Hi, how are you? You've been away with Hannah, haven't you? Um, yeah, I've been doing a bit of a declutter in the attic, getting all that lot out because we're going to be insulating it um, and floorboarding it, basically. So on Saturday, this weekend coming up, we're having, allegedly, if it all goes to plan, our loft hatch extended with a new loft uh, ladder. And that will enable Sandra to be able to get in the loft. At the minute, she can't really get through the loft hatch. Not, she's not big or anything like that, but the loft hatch is tiny. Um, so our loft is completely cleared. You need to go back a few videos and you'll see what we've been up to. Anyway, we've now started to order the material needed. And... Da -da 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 -da. This is what our living room is currently looking like. So we've got a lot of insulation um, at the moment. Um, that's literally just come. And then the next big delivery is going to be the loft boards. And they won't be as bulky as this, but they are really, really heavy. They're the OBC boards, not chipboard. Um, then we've got some um, light covers that you put on just as a, a, a fire precaution. And then I think it's about 600 screws um, that are going to be needed. So what I'm going to go and do now is I need to sort this lot out and just check the um, the delivery that we've got the right stuff, basically. And then I'm just going to hopefully, think, fingers crossed, this is going to um, <coughs> store in the conservatory um, for another, oh, being well, less than a week or maybe a week. Yeah, the, 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 the loft actually is getting done. And then I need to go up in the attic with Sandra. Then we need to put loft legs in. And once the loft legs are in, then I can start um, doing the insulation. Right, this is going to be a funny game. So I just need to sort this out into um, into the rolls. So, sorry, um, if you're thinking about doing this yourself, I don't know whether these videos might even help you or not. But basically, you've got um, you've got your your joist in the loft, and the what they call the base layer is 100 mil. So it's sort of the height of your joist. So there's some instructions here. We'll basically show you what we do, what, what we're going to do. So we've already got some existing um, insulation in the attic. Very old fiberglass stuff. It's been up there for decades. I'm not touching that. I'm laying this over it. Um, so this um, this hundred mil layer, basically, this goes um, down all of your joists one way. So what I'm going to do initially now, I'm just going to sort out the rolls of the hundred mil. Then I'll show you the the bigger stuff and how that works. Let me let me just sort out the 100 mil rolls from the other size rolls. Sorry, also another top tip, if you're gonna do this yourself, the different depths of the installation come in different square meterage. So it's a bit hard, well, it's not hard to work out, but make sure you're mindful that you just don't need six rolls of say 100 mil and six rolls of 170 mil. The diameters are actually different. So these ones, um, this is 100 mil and that's the square meterage that it's covering. So just really be mindful that the rolls look the same, but they're not the same. So the diameter of the roll is about the same, but the thickness of the insulation is uh, is where things go a little bit different. So I've just moved all the, um, the, the 100 mil stuff. So those are in, uh, they've got like black labels on them and the 170 mil that we've got is in orange. So our total, depth of insulation once this is all done if, if it all works out as go if it all goes to plan is going to be 270 mil um so that's your 100 mil down your joist so and then the um 170 mil this stuff here goes crisscrosses the opposite way around like a quilt um sort of thing um so if you notice the square meter um that it does on that is um it's smaller. Also, also, sorry, if you also notice this when you buy these, so it says partially cut. So obviously if you buy a roll that's a metre wide and you joist, uh, just for argument's sake, 300 mil, then you can saw it with a big saw or some of these are actually partly cut so you can tear them, um, which obviously help, helps matters a little bit. 
But as I say, top tip, make sure you have a, a, a full, full blown handsaw. And then if you need to cut this, you can cut it with a handsaw. Um, so this is this is the top uh, the, the 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 top up um, installation that we've got, uh, and it's um, yeah it's an elf installation. So uh, yeah, this is the stuff that people sort of seem to recommend. It's um, low level on top soft to touch. It's not like the old fiberglass stuff that uh, that used to be about. Right, so this is just down into the uh, shoved in the conservatory. Which if you again if you've been following my vlog, you'll see at the moment this has got a lot of uh, stuff has been emptied from here. I have a lot to sort out once the bedrooms are all emptied and the lofts all back in use. So we've got seven rolls of the 100 mil and we've got eight rolls of the 170 mil. Uh, so the great stuff, as I say, the, the easy thing with this is, um, at least it's super lightweight, the loft boards are so heavy, they are, they are seriously heavy. And I think they're coming on Saturday afternoon um, at some stage. Yeah, so there we are, right. And we're on a real typical Manchester peen it down day today. It's just really wet. Um, so Sandra attempted to rush her out for a walk earlier and she sort of just put her nose out and she's like, oh, I don't like the rain, not having any of that. And I just tried to take her out about half an hour ago and she's, uh, yeah, she's a very anti-rain anti dog. Um, right, so this is done. I'm catching up on some other stuff and still backing up bits and bobs. Um, um, that I've shot video files that I've shot over the last few days and then I'm going to make a slow cooked steak stew with dumplings um, So I might I might take you with me with that and I'll just show you Really simply how how that's done. It's nice and simple, but it's winter stodgy and it's really warmed you up and this time of year now um, Yeah, we've got some um, a nice steak stew which will be to be bubbling away from when Sandra gets home from work and I've got a French uh, loaf baguette um, nice crusty bread. You can dunk that all in and uh, and fill yourselves up with winter stock. Right, so this is my log store up at the top of the garden near the back door. So this is old kindling that I've split, um, and then this area here are logs. And as you can see, we're getting a little bit low at the moment. So I just filled my log basket. So that's going to go inside. Then um, I need to go down to my wood store and do a recce um, because next week I'm going to have to make a decision when I, whether I'm going to buy the logs in uh, which I've only ever done once in the last I don't know how long we've had a log burner for 12 years is it? something like that it's been a long time um, so yeah I'm going to, uh, going to go and have a look down down the garden I'll just show you where, where all our logs are no sorry this corner in the house This is um, these are the log baskets um, so I've just cleaned out the, the log burner and we do burn some coals um, as well, obviously, um, smokeless coals. And uh, if you've got a log burner, you'll know about the new regulations about um, only seasoned wood you're allowed to burn now, no crap wood or moist wood and things like that. So most of our stuff that's stored in the garden is down there for at least two to four years. Um, let's go and have a look. At, let's have a look outside, and I'll go and show you some of the um, some of the stuff we've got in the garden. Um, so this is a lean-to, uh, the top of the garden. That's conservatory that we've got. Um, so I've got a bag of coals here and I've got a bag in use and then um, what we do is we normally keep this one full uh, which is closer to the house as you can see all bagged up um, but because I've been away for such a long time this is empty and sorry I've got bags and I'm going to now go and bag up some um, bags of logs from the log store let's come down here and have a look so at this this is our kindling um, that I've split probably got enough for this year but that's really low seriously low um, these are a bag of bags behind here I've got more um, bags and logs um, but the main worry so I'm pull, let, let me just pull these bags out so we've you. definitely got enough wood for this year but normally this store is full and this area here is full and as you can see it's not um, and by the time I now empty this lot, oh it's starting to rain, empty this lot out into bags I'm only going to have that left so I'm prob probably going to get probably two tonne of bags um, delivered unless I can find some trees that have come down um, so as I say I'll get trunks like that and I can chainsaw those and split alright that's the 
both log stores to lean to has got some more bags of wood in and the log store at the top of the garden is now full these bags have got soft wood in um so i've got these from um houses that have been re -roofed. so soft wood and these will split um dead easy with an axe but i'm not going to do that today because i'm running out of time my stew should be in the oven i'm not even started it yet and i have got this pile of sort of bits of wood um, that got donated to us whilst I was away at the beginning of the year I think so these are several months old um, but these need seasoning for two years um, so I, ham I am going to have to get the chainsaw on those um, at some stage uh, before I go away So obviously with that with this log store um we don't fill it right up to the end because they'll just get wet. So um so I've got stuff that's easy accessible from the back door, and then I've got the lean to which is even closer, and then the main store down at the bottom. And as I say, next week I am gonna have to have a serious uh hunt to what I'm gonna do with wood for the uh, for the log burner for um not so much for this winter, for winter 2023-2024 stroke 2025. Um, you need to be thinking two years ahead of yourself. Right, so, just been rummaging the fridge. Um, so obviously I've been buying a few bits and bobs, uh, but I'm also trying to see what Sandra's got in the fridge. Mm, so I think she's been playing around at Halloween. So when we were little, in all seriousness, we didn't have pumpkins. I mean, where on earth is the idea came from to grow a field full of pumpkins to basically cut out and throw away and not eat that's such a waste but we actually used to use um turnips or swede i mean this is a swede uh, when we were little and we would holler holler out the swede and eat it or put it into a stew um, and then put a candle in it and i've got fond memories of all wax coming out of the mouths and being covered all my clothes being covered in wax Anyway, look, this is what I've got here. I've got, sorry, that's an advent calendar for baby Caden. Um, it's going to be his second Christmas, so I need to see Lucy, my daughter. I'm going to cheat, uh, and I'll put my hands up in the air. I've got a dumpling mix, which I'm going to cheat. I've got some um, a Swede. I've got some extra lean bacon, uh, bacon, beef here. Uh, carrots, potatoes, onion. And I might have a look in the uh, freezer and put some um, frozen veg. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel the carrots and the potatoes and the swede. Um, get some potatoes um, sliced. Um, and then I'm going to brown the um, diced beef. And I'm going to make up some gravy. Uh, so let's let's come, come on, let's, let, let, let's crack on, stop talking. All right, so that's everything peeled. And we recycle, or recycle, we compost, or put into a, um, a compostable bin all our um, peelings so we don't just throw them into landfill or, um, or anything like that so it's either going on the compost bin we've got in our back garden or our local authority has a scheme for um, for recycling um, food waste so that's a kettle you can hear now just got the kettle on so I'm just boiling up some water frying pan on the stove here and what I'm going to do now I'm going to brown off the um, diced beef and whilst that's browning off, I'm then going to um, chop up and cube up and um, get this lot ready to basically throw into um, throw into the pan of stew. So the great the great thing there is no recipe with with, with a with a good good sort of steak slow cooked stew. Just basically you can just throw anything you want in there. So um, don't be afraid if you want to put peas in or corn in or anything at all, just lob it all I in. Forgot. Sorry, I almost forgot. Because anytime you're cooking or you do anything food, you've got to say what option it is. So this is the this is the meat option uh, because you've got to tell everybody um, you're on meat. Um, if, you have, if you're having options nowadays. How many days are you just saying I had a vegetable stew? Oh, it's a plant-based stew. Oh, look, hang on a moment. Sorry, sorry. <sighs> and I've got some plant-based food going in as well. But yeah, so because you've now got to say what base foods you've got. Am I a he? A who? A him? Right, so we're gonna brown off, um, brown off this beef, um, which is already cubed up and everything, and it's already diced. And I'm now gonna go and start to chop up this lot and lob it all into the um, casserole dish.
I'll tell you what else. And do, am I weird or am I normal? I love raw swede. Love raw carrots, but raw swede is beautiful. Right, so I'm eating that. I've got a potato left over here, which I'm not going to cut up. I might put that into a pan of water because I'm getting I'm filling up. That's the steak all browned off now. So I'm going to get that into the dish. Right, so I'm now just going to sear all this lot up in my hands, get the um, get the meat in with the vegetables. Um, so you've got to be really careful when you do this because you can burn your hands. So give yourselves five minutes to let that meat cool That's down. That's all mixed up. And I'm just going to mix up some gravy granules um, as a stock and pour that over and I'll put the casserole dish onto a onto a baking tray so because uh, this will bubble over I know this will bubble over Right, so that's the um, gravy um, poured over. Um, was that about a litre or so, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's about a litre of um, gravy poured over. I'm now going to go and get a spoon, a wooden spoon, and <sighs> do, 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 give this a stir up and see whether I need to mix up some more gravy and then mix up a bit more. Um, because I'm just going to make sure this is almost full to the lip. Alright, just so we stir that in now and see what that looks okay, like. Okay. So we didn't need that potato. I didn't think we would. Um, that is all lovely, isn't it? Look at that there. I'm going to say on a baking tray. Um, lid on or lid off. I cook without the without a lid on. Um, I think it's sort of it's easier to stir up and you can get a little bit more crispier that way as well. Right, let's slam it in the oven um, on 180 oh, degrees. A preheated oven at that. So that's um, that's all in now. And I'm going to leave that in now for um, I'm going to leave that in for two hours and, and um, see how it's all bubbling and everything like that. Uh, give it a stir. Then um, I'm going to be mixing up the dumpling um, stuff and um, cooking in some dumplings as well. Uh, we do have a dishwasher, um, but because I've just been using the frying pan, I do tend to wash up as I go along. A good chef always cleans up after themselves. Always cleans up after themselves. Okay, so that little lonely potato that I peeled that was left over is in a pan of cold water until tomorrow. That'll, um, that'll save it. Uh, and big top tip, do you make homemade chips? So we'll sometimes do homemade chips, and my chips, I'm so fussy on chips. So we'll actually use our wok um, to make the chips. Um, so put some vegetable oil in, cut up the potatoes, one of these to scoop out the um, fried chips out the wok. But if you want really, really, really nice chips, really, really nice chips, soak your potatoes for 24 hours in water. Um, let that moisture get into them potatoes, and you'll end up with like a real fluffy in the middle, and crispy on the outside. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for tea tomorrow. I have, so we did do a shop yesterday. Uh, I have got several things lined up for um, the course of this week. And so I might do a cottage pie or a shepherd's pie tomorrow. Again, dead easy, really, really quick. And a, a good, easy winter, uh, winter stodge, get you warm. And uh, I'm not just saying this, but I know things, Sandra, in, in all honesty, if I am at home in the day and I've got time, I will always try and, um, if I can, make sure Sandra's got a freshly made meal ready for when she comes home from work. She's, um, yeah, she's gone out on to, um, she went out early this morning and she, oh, she's partly started a new job. We need, we need to get a job update off Sandra as well. She texted some news before about that. So I'll try and get um, a little update on Sandra's new job as well. Right, and the rain has held off. Shoes in the oven. Logs are done. Insulation done. Some work done. 
And a long last, I'm going to get for Russia to walk now it's stopped raining. See if she'll uh, see if she'll endure the dampness of being outside. Oh, garden. Sorry, we may have mentioned this before. Here used to be a wooden fence, and we've kept our garden as a garden with greenery and a holly tree and a cherry tree. And I planted this privet um, about, I think it's coming to three years ago. Look how big and beautiful that is. this way so I was absolutely sick I actually did a walk about the estate that I live on and every garden has been tarmacked over and every privet virtually every single privet has been ripped out and has been replaced with wooden um, fencing and it's ugly really seriously ugly so that privet hedge was literally about 18 inches high three years ago and look how much that's grown anyway the reason why I've sort of put that here is when I've got that bit of white fencing um, we've reordered um, some more privet so that is due in the next week or so so I'm going to be planting privet so come back in another three years and we'll have a proper privet hedge back on our front garden again just like it used to be Come here, death dog. What are you doing? Oh, is the grass too wet for your feet? Hmm? Is the grass too wet for your feet? And remember, make sure you pick up after your dogs. There's nothing worse than people who just don't do that, or even if you do pick up after the dogs, just like throw the dog bags full of dog shit, just leave it at the side of the road or whatever. Disgusting. Oh, look at that. Isn't that looking wonderful? Hang on a moment. Right, so the shoe is pretty well ready here. And I've done my Dumpling mix is all mixed up and what I'm going to go and do now is flour up my hands um, and make about six um, bowls with this dumpling um, mixture and put those on top of the um, on top of the stew here. So let me go and flour up my hands and um, place the dumpling mix into the stew basically. Right so that's the dumpling mixture all on and um, Love that in the oven now for half an hour, you'll be surprised how nice these come up. They'll all look a bit splodgy the minute if you've never done dumplings. Um, but yeah, let's lob that in the oven now. Give that another 30 minutes and um, tea for tonight shall be ready. All right, so there we are, all cooked. So the last 10 minutes, I cramped the um, heat up in the oven. Just get those dumplings on the top nice and crispy, but they'll be nice and um, soft underneath. So, time to go and get a scooper and blob it into a bowl. And I personally add a little bit of brown sauce and pepper to um, to it. Let me scoop out a bowl full and have a look. All right, so there we have my tea ready. I know you can see that there. So that's a steak stew with dumplings and a nice bit of crusty bread to add dunk in. And uh, a nice big bowl full for when Sandra gets back. And plenty there for tomorrow and um, for lunchtime. And if Sandra's going to see her mother tonight or whatever, there's, the, there's another portion there for the mother in law because that's the way the mop flops. Right, so, first of all, Sandra's back home from work. Well, she's been back home and she's gone to church and done churchy type things. Mm -hmm. And I've done some major reset on this camera, um, completely reset all the factory defaults and. I just put the light to 50 hertz to get rid of the flickering and look, we've got a bit more of a, a natural look without a uh, thing anymore. But that took a whole factory reset. Mm. Obviously, are you excited by that? I'm excited not to be squinting in videos anymore because that light he was using was very bright. So in case you wonder why Sandra was squinting, she didn't say I've been using an external light to try and get rid of some of the... Um, Lighting that was going. Anyway, um, sorry, I've had a very busy day. And how 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 was this? How was your stew when you come home? How was that? Stew was very tasty, thank you. Dear. I enjoyed that. No idea how lucky you are to have me, have you? 
<laughs> hmm? Seriously. Really nice, that. You've got a nice dinner for tomorrow and everything. Um, right, my screen's gone off, but I'm hoping that's all going to be okay. Hang on a moment. Right, sorry about that. Um, so, quick update on your job situation. So, you were meant to be working in Lou for a month, and things have moved on very quickly, haven't they? Not in Lou, dear. I was meant to be working out one month's notice in the current role, and then starting the new role in a month's time. I had a meeting with my current boss this morning and she's agreed to split my time. So I'll work eight weeks, but half time in the new job and half time in the old job, which will take me through till mid January. And that's all going to start next week. So it's all happening very fast now. And I was also told to, so I have uh, a desk in two buildings at the moment because I work between three buildings. So one of the people wanted me to clear my desk this week so I had to make a start this morning <laughs> so if your desk is anything like your office upstairs my god no not that bad not that bad it yeah. sounds bad right okay okay so there's a very quick update on where Sam is up to and uh there we are right mm. you're gonna sit down now and have your have we got here crusty bread and jam yeah I'm still finishing my tea because I had to come straight from work to my church meeting so I'm very late finishing my tea. Very late. Right, well, I'm going to go and have a wee. Thanks so nice for sharing that. So I'll share that with everybody. <laughs> and I'm going to have a can of lager. Then I'm going to have a soak in the bath. How about that? Right, guys, we're getting going. So take care, everybody. And, um, yeah, you, including you, and you, and you, and you, and you. We'll see you on the next one, won't we? We will do. Say bye. Bye, bye. for now.